Good afternoon. Welcome to Halftime Report. It's 12 noon. We're halfway through the trading session. Uh, while the benchmark indices are managing to be held up by names like an HDFC Limited, a TCS, if you pull up the contribution plate, uh, these are a couple of the stocks which are keeping the, you know, at least putting a lid on the downside for the Nifty. It's the broader markets which are selling off. So the mid-cap index is down about 2% in a span of two trading sessions. The mid-cap index has underperformed the benchmark indices by close to about 2.5%. And keep your eye on the rupee as well. It opened below that 74 uh, mark against the dollar, but now it's depreciated further. And now at 74.14, um, there has been a steady weakening in the Indian currency as well. So at a fresh record low on the currency as well. Hi. It's time now for movers and shakers. Also some news flow coming through. Officials from the finance ministry are saying that state-run fuel retailers unlikely to pay dividend to the government uh, this financial year. So a lot of the fallout actually of uh, uh, the fuel price cut that we had seen perhaps and uh, officials, uh, I mean sources in the finance ministry now saying that perhaps the dividend to the government uh, is now unlikely. But uh, let's get started with uh, all that else that's happening in the stock space and Tata Motors, that's top of mind, Rima. And look at the way that stock and the DVR have actually uh, seen collapsed. Yeah. yeah, it's collapsed. So now at a fresh six year low for Tata Motors in terms of a stock performance. The key reason is the September retail sales have disappointed, particularly from China. So total September retail sales are down 12.3%. China, which accounts for a quarter of the company's volumes, has seen a fall of 46%. North America, 7% lower year on year. UK, down 0.8%, while Europe has seen a 4.7% uh, cut uh, on a year on year basis. In fact, as per JLR, we've seen industry wide slowdown in UK as well as Europe on account of the new fuel emission norms, which got implemented uh, on 1st of September. So, industry wide retail sales are down 20% in UK and 31% in Germany. But apart from that, uh, Tata Motors has also announced that they will be shutting their Solihull plant for two weeks, effective 22nd of October. And the key reason is a slump in their China sales. Now, analysts say the annual capacity of this plant is 300. 100,000 units, which means a two-week shutdown will impact uh, the production by 12,000 units. The affected employees will continue to get paid. Uh, that's what Tata Motors has indicated. I'm reading out the statement which says, as a part of the company's continued strategy for profitable growth, JLR is focused on achieving operational efficiency and they will align their supply to reflect uh, the de uh, fluctuating demand globally. The problem is that Solihull plant is not the first time the company is trying to bring down its supply to match weakening demand. Earlier this year, the company had also announced that at uh, Castle Bromwich, another one of JLR's big plants, uh, the workers, the 2,000 workers there will move to a three-week workday instead of a five-week workday, just basically signaling that there is a serious demand slowdown in the European region on account of Brexit uncertainty, the new, uh, you know, uh, clamp down on diesel vehicles, and also now emerging out of China on the back of trade disruption. So ta that has taken Tata Motors severely low and huge selling pressure seen on that counter. All right, and of course, sugar stocks also now buzzing. Manisha, what's happening in the sugar space? Oh, plenty, and it's really turning sweet right now, the way we look at it, because the fundamentals really seem to be improving, starting with the domestic markets first, and we have seen the Maharashtra output expected to decline by 10%, and that really seems to have been supporting. There also is the government notification that has come out about mandating 5 million tons of exports from India into the international markets into the coming season, and what really seems to be helping is that the international prices have turned up, and the raw sugar now is trading at a four-month highs. There are reports on how... Thailand and Brazil are looking to produce less sugar as they are shifting attention to ethanol. So earlier, Brazil was looking at a downfall of around 5 to 6 million tons in case of sugar, but that now is estimated at around 10 million tons, and that would take away much of the surplus in the international markets which have been weighing onto the prices. And it's really timely that India would be exporting surplus sugar into the international markets. So all really seems to be falling well into pieces, and that is expected to support the sugar prices and sugar stocks going forward. Okay, thank you very much for that. Housing finance companies have staged a bit of a pullback today. Abhishek joins us to tell us more. Abhishek, uh, is it just a technical pullback or is there some fundamental news backing it? 
Well, Rima, to begin with, the National Housing Bank has actually increased its limit to 30,000 crore versus 24,000 crore in terms of refinancing. So, the, till then, they have sanctioned about 8,800 doctors, but we don't know what is the disbursement they have given to the housing finance companies. So, uh, the refinancing is a credit flow positive for housing finance companies and other institutions. Remember that if you borrow as a, a housing finance company, if you borrow from NHB, it is a tad bit lower in terms of cost of borrowing by 200 to 300 basis point and that is why you are uh, looking at an uptick in terms of uh, being positive for LIC Housing Finance, SDFC Limited, Canfin, Repco, etc. Back to you. All right, Abhishek, uh, thanks very much for that. Uh, but uh, the metals uh, space also remains in focus after the drop in global aluminum prices. Uh, Manisha, what else is uh, happening there? Oh, this place is quite buzzing, actually. Aluminum, of course, has seen drastic decline from nearly three-and-a-half-month highs that we saw being hit on Thursday last week. From there on, we've seen 9% of a decline come in from aluminum prices. This is because uh, the supply tightness concerns in the global market seem to have been taken care of, and we have seen that premium go off the prices. So very sharp declines into this one. But in other commodities, you have to take a look at the zinc prices. That is where the major gains have been. Three-and-a-half-month highs in case of zinc. We are looking at production continue to decline in China. If you look at the Shanghai inventories for zinc, those are the lowest in last 10 years and that has been supportive for that commodity. We saw nearly 2.5% gains yesterday, yet another 3% up for zinc prices today as well. So uh, quite diversified when you look at the metal prices, but each one actually trading on their individual fundamentals. Okay, thank you very much for that. A sharp cut seen in aviation stocks. So, Interglobe Aviation, in fact, is down close to about 10-odd percent. Um, Sonal, any update? Uh, well, there's a double trouble, basically, for these companies. And apart from that, Morgan Stanley has also written on Indigo. Uh, well, in terms of the double trouble, crude prices, they have bounced back to that $84.31 per barrel level. Also, rupee has touched its record low level. So, that is something that is putting some pressure on these airline companies. Morgan Stanley has written on Indigo. They maintain their equal weight rate. However, they've cut the target price to 819 from 1,070 rupees per share and they think that the earnings visibility for the industry as a whole is quite low. They are also concerned about the demand in this particular sector because we saw that there was a 16% passenger growth last month versus an average of around 20%. They also think the higher costs are some headwinds that the sector is facing right now. So they are waiting for some signs of consolidation. There is The demand is lower. However, the companies are not cutting their capacities right now. So they've cut their their EPS estimates for FY19 and 20 by around 59 and 70 percent and also they think that right now the key upside risk for though these stocks will only be a lower crude and also stronger rupee so that is something that is putting pressure on the companies right now all right and a whole host of other stocks also making news Anisha has that list with her Anisha Hi, Sumera. Good afternoon. Well, I'll start with Siemens because that one is down 6% in trade. That after the company issued a clarification to the exchanges saying that the 8,000 crore Pune order has actually been backed by Siemens Financial Services and not the listed company. And that's why we are seeing that reaction in the stock. Moving on to NCL Industries, wherein the cement production data has been rather strong. In fact, for the month of September, the production as well as dispatch has gone up by 30% on a year-to-year -year basis and the stock is up around 5 6 percent. Um, Aurobindo Pharma is also in focus that because they have actually reached a settlement regarding one of the litigations in US. Now this was in regards to the product Ruwada and uh, we do not know the details of the litigation but they have reached a settlement so sentiment positive there. And lastly one space that I would like to mention which is buzzing in trade and this one is on the downside. Names like Goldrich Consumers, Imami, Titan, Dabar, Pidilite are all coming under some sort of pressure so maybe some kind of valuation Correction happening for the consumption space. Back to you.